Yo, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back in. We are well on our way under the Clancy 21 Pilots album. Every song so far has been solid. Uh, there are a couple of standouts. Uh, let me see. Uh, so the Craving Jenna's version is a standout. Vignette is solid, but I like Routines in the Night. So Routines in the Night, Jenna's version, and Backslide are all of my standouts of the album. All the songs are good. There's not a miss, but those are the ones that are like from the get-go. I've been vibing with super heavy. So now we're on Lavish. Guys, follow us on stream. As you can see, we're doing this live. We got just over 200 people with us right now. Uh, so if you want to be part of the conversation, join us over on stream, link in the description. And also, all these videos might be blocked. If they're not blocked, great. But if they are blocked, the only way you're going to see the official video reaction, because uh, it's going to be blurred right here if it's blocked, is going to be on Patreon, along with all the commentary. There's not going to be any cuts or anything like that. It's all going to be on Patreon. But other than that, Lavish, see what we got. Welcome to the new way of living, it's just the beginning of life. Always on the road, bro. Hey, the fact that they're in these dumbass suits is so funny to me. I don't know why. Also, how long did it take to find all of these different, all of these different signs? You try your best to look like this is not your first time. You're fighting for the front row. That's a nice try. You're looking real nice, smelling like worth, walking like you deserve it. And if your feet are hurting, then that's when you know you brought the right equipment to put on the show and let it flow, let it show, shine. Let it show, let it flow, shine. The fact that they got style, the other kind of style spelling and not the regular style spelling. Not the bolo tie. Got that penny loaf of squeak, cross linoleum, big flex complex Napoleon. Hey. I say whatever and whatever that I want, sip a Capri Sun like it's Don Perignon. I'm talking tough happily with someone in front of me. Room on the payroll, everyone can live comfortably. I'm coming in hot, hot shot hypocrisy. NDAs for the folks that talk to me. So tell your friends that follow bots anonymous. Keep it cool, keep the mood androgynous. I see your problem is your proctologist got both hands on your shoulder while you're bottomless. Your proctologist got both hands on your shoulder while you're bottomless. This isn't necessarily a miss, but it's definitely like talking about it's gotta be talking about like the fakery that goes on within within music. Like all the it's fake from the artists. They acting like they have money. It's fake from the producers it's fake from everybody that's saying you're like what you see on tv is not really the way that it is it's just a fucking exactly scammy like the entire industry is a fucking scam it's one of the worst industries in all of the world the music industry is so dog shit bro you see these motherfuckers talking about like riding around in cars and the music you're like half the time th this shits are rented like the cars that these motherfuckers are flexing in music videos rented the bitches in the music video hired all the the people around them fake but they want us to believe that it's all real like that, you know? For people that don't know what a record deal is, it's basically a loan. Like, they're not giving you that money for free. They're giving you that money to make your album, assuming that you're going to make them 20 times the amount that they gave you. And if you don't, you owe it back. So, like, when people say they signed for fucking $5 million, that's a $5 million advance on a loan. That's not their money. That is the label's money. Until they pay it back, they are owned by the label. That's how record deals work. And I feel like people don't realize that. I feel like people just think that the label gives them $5 million because, hey, you're a good ass artist. Here's five mil. Go do what you want with it. No, it's like, hey, you're a good ass artist. Here's five mil. But to make sure we get it back, you're going to do what we say. So like all the lavishness that you see, 
unless they are veterans in the music industry unless they're someone like drake like pharrell like fucking the weekend taylor swift that's four people how many artists are big enough 21 pilots is obviously big enough Anybody that's been in the industry a long time is big enough at this point to where it's not like that for them. But if you're a new artist, if you see a new artist that's got all this all this shit, that's not them. That's not their life. That is not their life. That's the life that they are that we're giving money to put on for you to make you think that they're cool so that way you would buy their albums and try to act like them. That's what this whole song is about. So it's definitely like it doesn't necessarily fit on the album, but it kind of does because I mean you could think it's Dima, like not only just Dima being the internal battle, but just that overall, like there's these people above you that own you. So you can see it as the music industry. And this song would basically be calling them out. Yeah, anybody that's in the top 40 and that's been there, Dua Lipa, anybody like that's like that, they're good. But anybody that's small on the come up that just got signed to a major record label, they are not good. It, it'll take them a couple of years minimum to be able to say that they are making a profit. Yeah, this one's not lore at all. You can tell this one's not lore. There's no there's no white. There's no red symbology. It's kind of just their own. It's like a sta another standout. It's another standout track. Your problem is your proctologist got both hands on your shoulder while you're bottomless. They got money, but... And that's that's one of the things that I wanted to point out because they live fairly simply, but they're multimillionaires, right? Like when I think of lavishness, I feel like I would be paranoid to go and like spend this money that I'm making because I know that there's a chance that a blink of an eye could all end. And that's why a lot of pro like a lot of pro sports players, they go broke within like the first two or three years of them exiting whatever league they're in because they spend so lavishly thinking it's going to last forever. They spend their money completely unwisely. They can't keep up that lifestyle once the check stops coming in. Just driving around pointing out signs. Yeah, yeah, definitely going to be a hit or miss. People are going to say that's not a good song. I mean, and I can see why they would think that. I could see why, you know, it doesn't fit on the album, but it kind of does, but not really. Um, it's very jokey. Uh, it's very, like, tongue-in-cheek in terms of its its positioning compared to the rest of the album. It's a good message, but it could have been left off of the album, if that makes sense. It's a good vibe track. I don't know how many times I'll listen to it, but yeah. Yeah, it's just one of those.